hey guys welcome back to my channel Simone here and today I'm going to be filming another one in my Scooby-Doo-a-thon kind of related videos um obviously the Scooby-Doo-a-thon is well done by now um but today I'm going to be talking about the man himself Scooby-Doo and we are going to be talking about books that I have um I feel like have something to do with Scooby-Doo so um if you've not seen my previous ones I've so far done Velma and Fred um I am obviously going to do all of them uh, I'm probably not going to do Scrappy-Doo because I don't really like Scrappy-Doo and I don't actually watch the, the show that I that I watch has not got uh, Scrappy-Doo in it. So I'm probably not going to do a video about him but I'm going to do one about the rest of them. So as I said this one is my Scooby-Doo inspired books. This um, basically what I've done in the previous ones is I've mentioned five kind of things that I associate with Scooby-Doo. So they could be traits, they could be um, a colour, it could be all sorts of things and then I will pick two books per trait and talk about those books and say why I think that they relate in some way. So yes let's get started. So the first thing obviously is that he is a dog so Scooby-Doo is actually a Great Dane and also just a fun fact when I was looking into um, like the history of Scooby-Doo I found out that apparently his actual name is Scoobert Doo. I don't know how I feel about but anyway I thought that was quite funny and I thought I'd share that but um obviously like I say he is a dog and um I've read quite a few books of dogs in them whether it's the main character or whether it's other characters and I wanted to talk about a book that kind of has like a mystery sort of thing around it as well and this is my Sherlock Holmes bind up but I'm specifically talking about The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle I don't actually know if this is even in this one I'm assuming it is because why would you make a thing of Sherlock Holmes and not put that one in it? Yes, it is in here. Page 351. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Um, the Hound of the Baskervilles, the dog is actually not like the nicest character. Um, it is not a talking dog either, just so, as a clarity thing. Um, basically, if you've not read any Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock is an incredibly intelligent man who is often um, asked to be like a private detective I guess or to solve the mysteries um, around him and in this one there is a man that has been killed on the moor and um, seemingly there's an evil dog around or like a creature and yeah it goes from there I really really love that story particularly but I do love Sherlock Holmes in general so I'm really looking forward I haven't read all of these books in here yet but um, I wanted to talk about the Hand of the Baskervilles because it's one of my favourite Sherlock's and it probably is my favourite then we have a book that I read in um, September and this one I actually read for the Scooby-Doo-a-thon so it works out pretty well for me. This one is My Life in His Paws by Wendy Hilling. This is the story of a dog named Ted who is the first ever um, like a help dog for um, Epidermis. Epidermis. Hang on, I'm going to get it right. Epidermolysis bullosa recessive dystrophic, which is known as EB, which is basically a skin condition that causes um, Wendy Hilling's skin to tear and break, basically at the slightest touch. And she um, gets Ted and she trains him essentially and he becomes one of the canine partners, which is a charity in the UK that basically helps people um, who need sort of help dogs. And I loved this book, I thought it was wonderful and it was just that bond between Wendy and Ted that was really lovely and it really reminds me of Shaggy and Scooby's relationship, if you don't know, Shaggy is Scooby's best friend, they are all the way, there was always the two of them together, even though the whole gang is kind of one, it's definitely um, Shaggy and Scooby always, so yeah I really love this story as well and I would 100% recommend that you go and check this one out um, and yes I loved it. Next up, the next word is cowardly. Now, I don't think that if Scooby and Shaggy were here, they would be upset by me saying that. It's definitely a word that they use quite happily for themselves and it's not really even in a negative way. In their way, it's kind of like a um, self-preservation thing. Uh, they're just a bit scaredy pants. Um, so the first book I wanted to talk about is The Uglies by Scott Westerfeld and I'm specifically talking about the main character, Tally. She is terrified of basically everything. Um, if you don't know, this world basically is about um, what happens when it's a society where when you get to 16 years old you become a pretty. So you essentially have this kind of like surgery and you, your face changes and you become like a completely separate person. Um, but if you are in any way doing anything wrong or you get punished, you don't become the pretty. And Tally is terrified that she's going to stay an ugly for the rest of her life. And then one of her friends decides that she doesn't want to be um, a pretty and she decides to run away. And Tally essentially is terrified about everything. 
and um, I really enjoyed the book actually. I have decided not to continue on with the series. I mentioned in a book unhaul that I'm actually going to get rid of the books. But it was a good first book. It was okay. It just wasn't one that drew me into reading the rest of the series. But as a standalone, I quite enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I think that it was quite, I don't, I think Tally is definitely a very cowardly character. Next up, I had to get a bit of Harry Potter in here. This is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which is the second book in the JK Rowling series. And I'm talking about Gilderoy Lockhart, who is the Defence Against the Dark Arts teacher. I won't say too much because if you haven't read this or seen this, then you might not know from the beginning. So I will kind of let that go. But let me just tell you that Gilderoy Lockhart is the most cowardly man such a wimp such a horrendous i mean i hate him i actually hate his character however he's a coward for sure even neville longbottom is more brave is braver than he is and although saying that i love neville longbottom so anyway definitely gilderoy lockhart the next one I wanted to talk about is the word loyal and I definitely think Scooby is loyal. Um, it doesn't matter what happens, he will always go back for his friends. He's very much um, up there helping everybody and um, even though he's a bit scared he still does it because he has a massive massive loyalty for his... there was a piece of fluff. Um, he is, has definitely got loyalty for um, all of his friends. So the first book for that um, I wanted to talk about is Wonder by RJ Palacio. Wonder follows a young boy named August Pullman who has a severe facial deformity and has done since birth. And it's about him going to mainstream school for the first time and it kind of goes from there. And um, his family show massive um, loyalty and also he himself shows great loyalty. Um, they go through some pretty difficult things, um, not just because of August's illness, um, but also because of just the way that people treat him and also the way that they themselves have to deal with um, the reaction that they all get so yeah they definitely have a lot of loyalty and I love that story in fact I really think that um, August's sister is one of my favourite in this because I think she struggles the most probably um, but yeah I really really loved her just her tenacity and yeah I think that loyalty is definitely there and then I wanted to talk about the wonderful Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan um, I love Percy Jackson but him Annabelle and Grover just the three of them have this wonderful strength as a partnership and they are incredibly loyal to each other um, it doesn't actually matter although there's lots of other characters that come in and out throughout the books I definitely think the three of them are the most like bonded together and I think that they just are wonderful and I think that if you skipped out with if you had one of them that wasn't in a book I just wouldn't enjoy it so yeah definitely a great little um group there then next up we have um speech impediment I guess so as you probably know uh, especially from the prompt for the scooby doo -a -thon, Scooby says all of his words pretty much starting with an R so he will say um raggy instead of shaggy and um although that's not technically like a full speech impediment i mean he's a dog but um i'm kind of saying that that has i think if you think of scooby-doo you think of the r thing like that's just kind of like they go hand in hand so i wanted to talk about speech and speech issues in books and the first one that came to mind was truth witch by susan dennard because isolt one of the main characters um so basically isolt is a blood witch and she is sort of helps to look after her best friend safi who is a truth witch and um safi is essentially being hunted um because people want her abilities and um but isolt has um, a stutter so when she gets um, anxious when she gets nervous when she doesn't know things around her she kind of starts to stutter and uh, her speech um, is affected and I really enjoyed reading about that because I think that it's definitely something that's important and um, a lot of people deal with uh, speech problems especially um, stuttering it's kind of a big thing so I think that we should have more books where some of the characters stutter I think um, it's kind of dealt with in different ways, but it's definitely something that I think is important to talk about. And then the other one I wanted to talk about um, is House Rules by Jodie Picoult. Jodie Picoult is one of my favourite authors because every book that she's written, I feel like she just researches really well and really goes in depth into it. And House Rules follows a um, boy named Jacob. Yeah, a boy named Jacob who has Asperger's and his tutor is murdered. And um, essentially he gets accused and you know, they think it was him uh, because he's like he was like obsessed with um crime forensics tv shows and things like that now um somebody who well one of the um main symptoms like not symptoms one of the main uh, traits of somebody who has asperger's can be that they um take things very literally so when i say speech i don't necessarily mean full speech although there are also some speech issues that go alongside that but i do think generally there's a lot of um 
saying things, you know, the way that words may sound to us, like a certain sentence might mean something, have like a implied meaning, but he can't necessarily understand that and thinks that he, and he answers it in a different way. And it's kind of about how he potentially, um, kind of can let off a certain impression even though that's not necessarily the impression he meant to give so that's what I mean by that I think so yeah definitely one um I would definitely recommend that you read House Rules because I really loved it and um, there's lots of really interesting topics and um conversations in that book which I really enjoyed so yeah it was definitely a great one and then the last sort of prompt that I want to talk about is disguises so Scooby-Doo um and his and the gang to be honest are very well known for their disguises they're very good at disguising themselves but they also are really good at disguising Scooby as an actual human so there's been many times when he gets dressed up in a dress and a hat and made to look like someone's grandma um, which I always find is hilarious but so I wanted to talk about disguises because I think that's a big part of Scooby-Doo um, and so the first one I want to talk about is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo Six of Crows is a wonderful story that I really enjoyed and it definitely has that kind of group element of disguise I guess so if you don't know what Six of Crows is about it follows a um, group of six misfits seemingly who have to take part in this sort of seemingly impossible heist in order to um, get something and they have to disguise themselves essentially to get into the place where that thing is being kept and so there is that disguise element I really really enjoy Six of Crows I gave it a five star it was wonderful and again if you've not read it I will, I will implore you to read it because I think it's great um, but there is definitely that disguise element so if you enjoy that I think you'll like it in this one and then the other one I wanted to talk about is The Wonderful 13 by Steve Kavanagh which is one of my favorite books of all time Time. and um, 13 follows a serial killer who gets onto the jury by disguise he gets onto the jury basically of his own serial murders um, where another man is accused of it and yeah I absolutely loved this I thought it was great and um, the disguise element is really really clever in this and you, it keeps you guessing so definitely one that's worth the read and then that is all for the prompts for this video. I wanted to do a shout out for the wonderful Katie at Books and Things. I love Katie's channel. I got introduced to Katie's channel, I believe, by Charlie from Charlie Brooks. She mentioned her recently. And I really, really love her videos. Um, she recently hit 10,000 subscribers, which is amazing. And she did a favourites week, which um, I has not finished yet, but I believe it probably will be by the time this video goes up. Um, so go and check that out. She's doing like seven days of videos, basically, where she talks about her favourites, um, her top 10 sort of favorite things of each time so yeah definitely somebody to check out she also was one of the co-hosts of the Jane Austen July and I believe she's also hosting Victober um so yeah definitely somebody who is really really amazing and something that you somebody that you should definitely check out um so yeah that is my shout out for this video so let me know what do you like about Scooby-Doo which is your favorite trait of his and do you think these books go with his traits basically give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i shall see you next time for another video bye guys